All right, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the webinar. Yeah, we are really, um, it's going to be a really good one and a half hour. So the first hour will be focused on the, all the material and then then seven, um, eight to 8.30, we'll focus on question. If you have a question, you can stay, but we're trying to finish all the material um, before eight o'clock. All right, I have my colleague here. And then I think for the, this is really the whole team. And they have a Nick will be uh, control the polling question and the Eva will be uh, helping to chat and the Q&A some, maybe you have some question and then he can type. Uh, answer some of the questions. All uh, right. Since uh, this correction, the uh, chat is currently disabled. If you have questions, you can uh, direct them towards the Q and A feature, which is on the bottom bar on the Zoom. You can yeah, click that and ask any questions. Yvonne will be answering them throughout by typing them. Occasionally, we'll be answering them uh, live. Um, throughout. Yeah. Thank you. I'm in the chat. Sometimes, probably Yvonne will send in information from the chat. Yeah. That's right, thank you. All right, since this is a webinar, usually when we're hosting 3D printing workshop, usually a whole day or half day. But this is a webinar, we don't have our interaction. So during the webinar, we, we may have some polling question, couple of polling question. In the end of the webinar, we have a, uh, some survey question for you guys. Then get to know you, uh, know you a little bit. All right, who we are. So this is today's agenda, who we are, MSU St. Andrew. And then I'm going to focus on the introduction about 3D printing technology. And then we'll, uh, uh, two parts. And the second part will be Tinkercad, very briefly introduction. And then when you exit the webinar, you have uh, some survey question. All right, so first important question, um, Nick can put on. So basically, uh, I get to know you a little bit. Give you like 15 seconds. All right. Let's see, what is the result? Uh, currently 21 out of 30 have voted 31, so. That's uh, all right. Okay. Um, okay. All right, so are we display the result? Here we are. All right, I'm so glad to see a lot of students, a lot of people interested in then, and the parents here and teacher here too. Well, we have a um, very diverse um, audience here. Thank you. All right, so I'll move on. So that's who we are, MSU. I often have people asking me questions. So you are Michigan State University. Are you in East Lansing? No, actually not. This is East Lansing. We are in Milan, Michigan. So that's what we do. This is a directly from our website. So what we do in our facility, we focus on the research. We have a couple of research going on and then we have a K to 12 STEAM education. So this picture on the top right, it's a few years ago, our, our summer intern students picture. So we are really, um, really driving, trying to promote STEM education for um, Great Lake area. So like uh, we have um, all the through the year, we have a different workshop activity and for teacher and for students as well. And then the summer we have a intern and doing research in all the science area and then 3D printing, of course, and then writing and coding. Last year, we have uh, over a hundred students not just from Michigan, because we did a remote, uh, did a virtual. We have a we have a student from different state. That's who we are. All right. Next, then we started with introduction three D printing technology. So before I start this, I like to do another polling question. And Nick, can you bring on the second polling question? So just to know you a little bit, do you have any experience with 3D printing? And then what is your level? And then when I started talking about 3D printing, get a better idea. All right, so what is the result? Wow, I'm so glad that you don't have experience uh, 3D printing, but that you are interested, you want to learn. 
and some have uh, some experience. And then some have a pretty good experience. That's great. Another very diversity audience as well. All right, here's, so what is 3D printing technology? Before do that, I'd like to introduce our lab. We have a very um, pretty, pretty uh, good 3D printing lab. If you look at um, Flash Forge Dreamer, we have a 12. So in the summer, we have a last, just that past summer, our summer intern student, and we have a seven student. They each one take one printer home. We have a couple of students never had any 3D printing experience. There's no CAD experience. At the end, they had a great experience. One student even no any experience, but so much love this project and love 3D printing. End up he create a fund, uh, create a account, go fund me, and it found a printer for his school robotic team. Now he's working on the science project about a 3D printer. He has no, he had no experience, but now it's it's just see how much his um how much the the summer intern with 3D printing technology impact, and then he's um he's interested. So we have a Fusion 3 that's um very high resolution and have a race 3D and then not just high resolution and then very big volume, and then we have a uh, recently we added to uh, Prusa. And printer and the one it's I use um uh use a uh, use uh, square on the prints it's a SAL printer it's a different printer so we'll, later we'll talk about it and then we have a very high end scanner so this is our 3D print uh, printing lab if you look this this is one of the middle school uh, robotic team with us they get so excited I always have a student comments can I come back and then can you keep this longer and then just just so much fun in the lab. So I like to always start with some story and the story from ourselves. So if you look at this, this is a robotic team competition, um, robotic team competition in Dow High School. So like one team, the pony was broken, we well, were able to print for them. We, we bought our printer during the robotic competition. So this is a middle school, the robotic, robotic team, they see how much they're using the the 3D printer in the robot. So if you look at this, the student and the design the phone holder as a, as a robot on it. So we have a lot of uh, high school as well. So I'm just a few example. This is another example. We always have a Northeast and the middle school student come to the girl STEM club student come to us for the workshop. I teach them, usually we spend a whole day. I teach them with different cat. So this is a twin sister, end up um, people like different CAD software. Um, so see, this is a, the school project. The school was have a new science curriculum. They like to do um, homemade the homemade model, and then they try to use different material to make this hub, but it just not last longer. And then since the teacher thought, hey, why don't we do the 3D printing? So they have the two uh, students and they did the prototype and then they use different CAT software and that end up will print 100 for them. But this of course is not ideal for the hub. We can have a less angle that will be much better with a wire, with a core wiring. But this is a very good example of how the student are using what they learn and then apply for the, to the class, to the whatever the study. So this is a very good example. And this is another example. We have a, a workshop for teachers as well. So the teacher take what they learn to the classroom. So they did a, for the pre-algebra and the algebra class. I'm just using one of the example from algebra class. So they ask a student to borrow our printer and they create a project learning the function transformation and they're using the online graphic calculator. Like this student that has a trumpet. And then using the mass function, end up create the trumpet and the printer. So that's very ex um, how the able to using the mass function in the graph in the graphing uh, graph end up print the real object. It just really uh, engage student what to learn from very abstract mass function. So this is another highlight of our printing story. So last year, 2019, it's an international periodic table. We celebrate um, the international, uh, uh, celebrate the periodic table for 150 years. The ACS American Chemical Society chemist 
with disability. And Michelle coming, she's working for Dow, uh, Dow Chemical. She approached to us, said, hey, you guys have a 3, 3D printing lab. Can you create a dynamic interactive periodic table for people uh, with disability, like highlight the hands and the braille. So we end up have a 30, over 30 students, majority middle school, we have some elementary school because of sibling and the high school student from this area. And then we worked a few months. Finally, we generate this gigantic periodic table. The, the, the length, uh, the width is about um, probably six feet and the length about is eight feet. So it was in the uh, last year in the San Diego, it generated great interest. And then we end up just last week, this project is, um, get award from the Camerary Luminary Award. So this is very exciting, how the student able to learn science, the chemical element, and the combine with the 3D printing. And then it's bring all the, um, all the different elements in this project. And then this is our story. Uh, the, this finished our story. We have much more stories, so I'm just stop here. This is in the in the real life, like um, for the medical application for the dentist. So this I just give you an example for the dentist in Milan. So it's also dentist because my kids go there. So I just noticed, oh, they have a 3D printer. So here we go. So David David is also dentist. So they have a 3D scanner. They scan your teeth and then get the model and then they have the very good uh, for the dentist the printer and then the print mold and then you just compress and get the retainer so that's make the the um other dentists much more convenient you don't worry about oh, i break my brace what should i do then just compress another one it's much more inexpensive because you have the mold there Another example in the in the medical in the assistive uh, technology. Imagine uh, for us using a spoon, just like so much easy, right? Because how we use every day. But for people with a disability, it's so hard. Like grab a spoon, it's very hard. But with that little tiny three D printed device, the people with the mu uh, the muscle that with the, uh, the issue, they was so much easier. I I heard from the occupation therapy told me about a story like. The parents once um, they're able to use the spoon, the kids, and they, they were just crying. And they like open the water bottle. It just just really bring the very simple device able to help people impact people in big way. Like this uh, three different musician uh, musical notation, like a prosthesis. This is a huge in globally enabling the future. It's a it's a globally a lot of volunteer work together. Helping, pe helping people with um, missing them. And, and this, I just give one example from University of Minnesota. And the professor uh, did a TED talk. So the future, it's a lot of group doing very similar research with 3D printing. The, the, the future talk about it possible for people who are not able to see, able to create artificial bionic eyes. So that would be the future to print the old, uh, the organ and able to bring all the functionality to it. So that many story and then all the link is on the web page. And then if you uh, you have any questions, just type in the question. Maybe Ivan can put in the put those link to it if you need. Here's another story for the. Uh, I don't know how many you how many of you follow the college basketball. Last year, at Michigan State one of the player Nick Ward. And then he got a fracture on his left hand. So only a few days, the MSU engineering group able to make that, uh, make this, uh, make him go back to the court again. So they use a 3D printed uh, um, mold and they use carbon fiber and the brace components put together. And then Nick was able to go back to the court. Only a few days, can you imagine? And then here's another uh, very interesting story from HP. When we talk about HP with printer, of course it's a printer, right? But they have a very, very um, uh, 3D print as well. So here's a story, 3D printer print parts for 3D print. That's true. See, over 140 parts was actually with a 3D printer printed. And then look at this printer. So this is an aluminum block. It's, uh, it just uh, holds a sensor. 
but with um, innovation design, with a 3D printed design, redesign and print with this 3D printer and they're able to reduce 96% weight. And then it's really the, the just save the material and then and the much, much better in the weight. And another three story I like to always um, show, show everyone, it's a carbon 3D a company. Now it's a carbon company. It's Joe Dismo. Joe Dismo is a chemistry professor. He was in our facility 10 years ago and with a well-known uh, scientist talk we have uh, every year. So he's, a, he's an amazing scientist, but at the same time, he's a very uh, uh, entrepreneur. So it's about five years he started his uh, company, Carbon 3D in Silicon Valley, but now his company, it's just, just booming. And then his vision, later we'll learn, for the 3D printing, it's very hard for you, you making isotropic part with mechanical property. But his vision able to make isotropic and with mechanical property and the surface finish. So he's work, uh, working, the company is working on that, was really successful. Like this is Adidas shoes. There are many different uh, applications. I'm just giving an example for the Adidas, Adidas shoes. And then here's a um, story for NASA. If you, if you attended to any of uh, one of our astronomy night, Dr. Star talking about a lot of space astronaut. So if you think about an astronaut, go to the space for about a month and for future, maybe six months. So if they need a tour, you think about it, we ship to them or what, right? If they have the 3D printer, they need anything. We can, the earth can send a model to them. They can just print right there. So imagine the shipping, right? Everything is, seems impossible or um, take the time. And the, the astronaut in the astronaut in the space for the longer, long time, like a month, with a fresh vegetable. There were people and then using a 3D printing for greenhouse, for the habitat in the moon and the Mars. And it's just so much more you can do for the, for the space using 3D printing. So another story is a rocket engine. We're able to use 3D printing. The company, RPM Innovation uh, Company in South Dakota, actually this summer we had an engineering talk to our summer intern. It's really cool. So I'm going to show the video, about a minute video. I'm just bringing up another story for us, for our 3D printing lab since COVID-19. And then um, we, we've been working very hard for uh, using the 3D printing pre, uh, printer face shield, work with our main campus. So there's so much more for the 3D printing. Earlier, people talking about it's a prototype, but not anymore. That's production. There's so much more involved, uh, involved uh, engineering, math, coding, and design. It's all the discipline put together. So I like this um, this um, slide from this picture from Stratasys and how the 3D printing field, the STEAM education, and in just in all different discipline. So here's um, how the how the you um able to like define the problem, create a model, design the solution, how those all fit in with the, the next generation and the common core, all the standards. So this is just a few, uh, few pictures from our teachers, from our teacher workshop here, from our robotic team, from the high school robotic, robotic team. And this is just uh, two pictures from 
our last two years summer intern here. So we did a virtual last, um, just, um, just a past, past the summer. All right, here is, I'm finishing my story. So it seems like a lot of interesting application, right? But what is a 3D printing? So it's 3D printing, people were talking about additive manufacturing, it's very similar equivalent. Even some people disagree, but very, very equivalent. It's a process where digital 3D design data is used to build up a components in layer by layer by depositing material. So that's a 3D printing. You first, you have a design, and then you deposit your material layer by layer. So compare the traditional manufacturing, what's the difference? For the traditional manufacturing, and of course, it's much higher cost for the manufacturing and the shipping. For 3D printing, it's much easier because it's very rapid and the prototype. And the less innovation design, if you need it for the traditional, if you need a, something to um, change some design, it's, it's going to much, much more work. But for the 3D printing, it's so much easier. You can do in the computer and then if it work well and, and it's just much, much, much easier. And the speed and the much easier for 3D printing if you need anything. The compressed design circle is much less time. For the traditional, it's take much longer time to building a final product. And the waste, 3D printing exactly the material deposit on, so much less waste. And then traditional, obviously, it's a block material. You do, uh, you do the cutting and the injection mode. So it's generally much more, um, much more uh, waste. And of the, the limitation is a 3D printer. It's dependent on the, how big the size of a 3D print. It's a size limitation. But, but for the manufacturer, you have a, a larger, uh, traditional, you have a much larger scale production. So either one, is a, they will always compromise each other, probably will never replace with whom but it definitely is good to compromise. So the history of the 3D printing, actually it's been a while. The first printer is invented by uh, Chuck Hall. It's 1983. Actually he's working on coding and the solidifies the coding and the end up he, he started using the computer design and then started first ever printer steel lithography with, uh, with the material started with liquid. So he, he, uh, then he started uh, his own company 3D system and it's still very well known in 3D printing up, 3D printing company. He even stepped off the C, uh, his position as a company, but it's, he's still very actively involved. So it's, it's been a while, right? 83, but a few years later, and the Scott, and he invented and the patent FDM technology, and then apparatus and method for creating 3D dimension object. So he called this manufacturing process Suffused deposition modeling as FDM, just we are today. So the same year, he and his wife founded their own company as a Stratasy. They I show you all the picture is from the Stratasy company. So um, the FDM pattern expired about a little over 10 years ago. So that's why 3D printing seems like we know it's more recently. Probably main reason is open source hub. Um, they started open source. The community really embraced the technology. So this is a um, little bit of the history about the 3D printing. Uh, the few step station modeling is mostly in common in education in a lot of lab because those printers are much less expensive and much easier to operate. So that will be our today's focus. It's FDM in um, 3D printer. There are many, the uh, 3D printing type of different uh, technology can divide by different and depend if you talk about a material, that's how we use the material. And then depend on the, what do you want to focus on? So I'm just using the material. So you, if you use solid material, that's exactly we talk about the FDM, few step position modeling, that's what we focus on. The first printer is invented is by Chuck Ho, it's SLA, SLA printer. It's a steel lithography printer. So many, many different technology here, many different, um, by material, see powder based, that's HP, uh, HP printer is by powder. And then for the uh, carbon 3D, it's actually, it's very similar I, SLA, but it use different light and different technology, how to cure the resin, but it start, uh, started with liquid. So I'm getting a little bit more precisely with uh, SLA. So selective solidification technology it makes a solid object 
from a liquid by selectively, selectively applying the energy to solidify the liquid in a layer at a time. So they are uh, SLA and then they are DLP. DLP is using by the carbon company. So this uh, example, the video I took from the dentist office. I'm just going to show you. See the, the dentist took the mold from your teeth and then use the mold 3D printer, of course, it goes through the process, right? And then this is a 3D print. I'm just play the a minute. Above. And then the base plate will pull down. Mm -hmm. And so now we're on layer number three. Each layer using that light solidified. Now the sad thing with this printer is I can't see it. Mm -hmm. until I literally move the, the right. tray up out of the way, the tambourine up out of the way. Right. Where with our old printer, you could actually see it. It was almost like the Terminator when it comes mm -hmm. out of the silver. <laughs> wow. But, um, so it's layer by layer. Mm -hmm. and layer by layer. Use a UV light to cure them. Yeah, it's about taking about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, SLA. But now we talk, let's talking about the FDM. It's a selective deposition technique. So it's a filament based printing. It's melt the filament, usually it's a plastic, and then place the melted plastic to create an object very precisely. It's a fused deposition modeling, and then all fused uh, filament fabrication. So this is a very, uh, very basic uh, components in the FDM printer. You have a spool of a material and then you have the mechanic gear and it drags a, a drags a filament. And then you have a heating block, heat the material, basically just melt the material. And then you have a nozzle. The nozzle has a very small hole. In general, it's a 0.4 millimeter. And then that's your design. And then the hard material very precisely deposited on your design. So this is um, uh, expand, uh, see how the nozzle look like. See each strand, each material, layer by layer, deposited on the object. This is the actual printer. So this is our printer. So uh, FDM printer. This printer, when people talk about 3D printer, oh, wow, that's, that's kind of scary. How big is it? This is very small, even smaller than most of the microwave. It's, if you look at the dimension, and they're only 24 pounds. That's why our summer intern were able to each one take a printer home. So um, it's basically very similar, no matter what type of printer, very similar um, components. You have to have a frame, right? So good thing about this printer, it's, um, it's uh, everything is enclosed. It's, uh, so it's much safer, uh, consider the environment. And then uh, I, I need to mention that when we bought the printer five years, four years ago, it's about a thousand dollar, but now it's so much cheaper. You can buy $600. So just see how the technology um, much, much in the mature, maturity level and then the competition, right? And then every printer has a build platform. Look, this is here. If you see my, uh, my uh, red uh, circle, uh, my red mouse and the extruder. So this is, um, this will be the extruder. So our extruder is here. You can see much. The extruder have a different design. You can have a Bolden extruder. The mechanic, the me mechanic gear is in the back. And then directly driver, uh, driver extruder, the mechanic is in the front. Ours is in the front. The both have a, a different advantage. If you have a material very soft, you have to have a direct driver extruder. That would be uh, because the material is soft, it goes through all the uh, long tube, it's hard. But this, and with Bolden, it's the, the, in, the, um, in the extruder is much lighter because you don't have all the weight with on it. Anyway, they both have our own disadvantage and then advantage. You can have a single and dual extruder. For our printer, for the Fusion Dreamer, uh, Flash Forge Dreamer, we have a 10, it's dual extruder. And then we have two, is a single extruder. So all our 3D printing periodic table is printed with dual extruder and print. You're able to have a two color. And the retraction, what is the retraction? Just, just imagine this is a printer, the material, they're all hot. And it's a very melting material. If you don't have a control, if you, the mechanic, mechanic uh, moving around with, with the nozzle, 
you're going to have a dripping everywhere, right? So just like when you uh, do your frosting in the cake, and then if your frosting need a certain viscosity, if it's too, it's it's not viscosity have a, a um, hold enough, you will see dripping. You're writing happy birthday, probably will mess up, mess up. Same idea here, retraction. The printer will able to hold the hot material, and then when when the nozzle moving around, and then able to very precisely, and then bring back the hot material exactly precisely depositing the in the position. So that's a retraction. For in general, uh, in general, for what we printing, use that standard, that's good enough. For what we do research, we, we sometimes we have to play around with the re, uh, retraction. And the nozzle, like I mentioned nozzle, it's very uh, small hole. In general, it's 0.4 millimeter. And the moving parts, and the move around with all the, um, they, they have a different um, printer, different how the, Bring how the moving moving the parts so it can be nozzle or can be platform, and the control electronics. So the process of three D printing. Let's talk about it. So what is the how this whole thing work together, right? So just think about it, you have an idea. So that's why we need to have an art. Sometimes when you design something, you need to have someone creative with thinking. Or well, how do you? I want something. How do I break this down? I'm able to design it, right? So you get an idea. And now you have to design. So design the 3D model, and then you have to use a certain software. And then the, the software is we're using is computer added design. So that's why people say CAD. That's what that means, CAD software. The most popular software, um, CAD software generally the file is STL. That's usually for 3D printing. But there are many, many different types, depending on what type of software. But usually, no matter what, usually you are able to convert to the STL file. And then you have the model. It's not enough. You have to slice it. What does slice mean? You just need to convert all the digital 3D modeling into printing instruction for 3D printer to create the object. All the information bounded together as a G code and then send it to the printer. Because the printer only reads the machine language. So they were not able to, what is model, uh, what is your model, doesn't, doesn't matter. They need a G code. So that's a G file or GX or G code file. So there are two files here. One is your model, one is your slice file. And then you're able to print from, create a physical object in the printer. So that's in general the process. So you have to, you get this idea and then you, create a model from the user using the CAD software and then you slice it and you print. So how do we how do we make a model, right? So there are many different websites that do free. And then if you search basically for now those day, I over the five years I see how much change in 3D printing world. You search anything, I I bet you you can find it always find something. So one of the website thingiverse all this link is in the website, uh, in our, uh, in the web page, in this webinar's web page. And the Thingiverse, Instructable, and Pinshape, my manufacturer, and the Pinterest. And then also from the, our printer from the Prusa, and they have a lot of good um, 3D models as well. Or use a 3D scanner. I mentioned the, for the dentist office, right? You can have a 3D scanner. Or you design your own. You know, I heard people talking about in, even professional. Sometimes they design things based on someone else's model, just do modification. That save you tons of time. Anyway, so computer added design. The the one today we're talking about is the Tinko Cat. It's a free from Autodesk. It's a web based, browser based three D design tool. And then there are many more, but this will be our today today's focus. Even Tinkercad, I see how much they, they are getting much better um, improvement. And the blocks cat is uh, writing a code, but using a blocks, very similar like scratch code, um, writing a programming, but using a blocks. And the open scat, that's really you have to write a script. Depending on what your interests are, I have some teacher and teacher like math coding, they love open scat because they are writing the code. And the very beginning, I did use some sketch, uh, sketch up and then do the modeling. And on shape, that's uh, free as well. 
all those software free for education, especially for Unshape, Fusion 360. It's just very generous, those company, education is free. And then those are cloud-based. And the Fusion 360 uh, is cloud-based as well. This is our high school summer intern uh, this year. We used the uh, uh, Fusion 360. So I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, so see, we generate um, the model, right? The next, you have the slice. So the slides we talk about it, you have to convert a digital 3D model into printing instruction. So for the for the convert the model into 3D printing instruction, you have to consider what type of material you're using, right? And then different material have different temperature. And then and then most general um, in general, we're using PLA because this is uh, material considered biodegradable and then it's a it's a very um, environment friendly. If you're using ABS for, for us in our lab, we have to use in the, uh, have a vending um, like hood to um, consider some harm, harmful, maybe smell, maybe residue, but POA is the most common material. And then the starting point, uh, you just think about it, you deposit material on the, on the bed, right? You have to have the bed and the material stick on the bed and the strong enough will not move around anymore. But then after printing, you are able to remove it, easy to remove it. So this is kind of tricky. You have to play around with the gap between the bed and the nozzle. And then if you, if you model, if you model like it's just flat, that's much easier. But if you have a like, for instance, you have a dog that's four leg, right? But the dog's belly, how do they deposit the material? So you need a support. And then, so you have to looking for uh, orientation, but in general, it's pretty straightforward how you're looking all those information. And then you sometimes you have to post printing process, but for the slice, you have to consider material and then consider all the details. But the most important is the material choice. Those details, they, they usually the slice software automatic setup. And the material, like I said, I use POA. There's so many, so many more material. And there's so many composite, composite material. And then you see like graphene with POA, even conductive material. So I'm not going uh, with all the details. So just POA, polylactic acid. It's a biodegradable made from na natural resource. So it's uh, sensitive to the moisture. So you have to usually I keep in the bag so what is the T-code? See, once you slice it, you create a T-code, right? That's what the T-code look like. You can read it, but do you understand it, right? So like T-90, what is T-90? Switch back to absolutely position. Like M104, start heating the extruder, right? And then like G1, move to start of priming, right? And then G92, zero extruder length. Anyway, so you can read it, but you don't understand it. But those are the machine code. That's a G code, G code file, able to put in the printer to print. So you can use many different way, SD card, USB cable, Wi-Fi, and whatever. I'm, I'm going to demo you guys use SD card and the three, uh, put in the 3D print. So that's it about the 3D printing technology. Give you guys uh, very briefly all outline about what 3D printing. Any question? I may take a minute for just in case you guys really have some questions. If not, so just move on. Uh, oh, Yvonne, uh, th there is one question that you wanted to ask live, right? Uh, yes, um, an individual had asked, uh, I believe the answer is through the SCAD or SCAD. Um, an individual wanted to know how they would do something like design a trumpet through functions only. Oh, mass function is mathematical function. Like you have a straight line and then use a linear, linear algebra, like y equal x what, or how many, and x uh, plus b something, right? But if you have a curve, depend on what type of curve, you have, see, have to use different mass quant uh, uh, function, like quadratic and then different. Okay. Did that help? Um, I believe so. I, uh, another person was uh, wondering about the Fusion 360 license and is it free for only a year? And then you can continue renew it if you're still in the education. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. 
they are very generous. You just email them, or they they sometimes just you have to re verify your your um your education status. And uh, another person is getting started at home and would like to know what would a good three D printer be for a first time purchase. Yeah, you're like, uh, why don't you stay with Q and A? Then we can have a we can help you with those questions. Thank you. All right, so Nick, can you bring out uh, last polling questions? So we'll transition to um, Tinkercad. So I'd just like to know what is your guys' experience with, uh, with CAD software and Tinkercad and the other CAD software? All right, let's see, what is the result? I think you need to give people a few more seconds to respond. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there you go. Cool. All right, that's good to know. All right, what is a Tingle Cat? Tingle Cat, like I mentioned earlier, it's an Autodesk um, product. So it's very for very um, beginning for the CAD software, but actually it's very capable. I have a, I met an engineer in the summer and then she told me she, she designed pipeline. She is, she even using Tinkercad sometime. I met a professor as well, say so using Tinkercad is so much easier. Anyway, it's a free, it's an online 3D model program. It's running the web browser and then uh, be known for its simplicity. Yeah, it's a just very nice new feature. It's, it's new, very new. For if you're using iPad, there's an AR feature there. So that's really cool because I don't have an iPad. So I didn't try it. I just got to know a few days ago. Anyway, there's a three environment in the Tingle Cat. So why is 3D design? It's a 3D um, editor. So that's our all our periodic table. It's still in the Tingle Cat. So if you would see this, so the student learned the, uh, the, the, um, the chemical element 20 is calcium. So what is associated with calcium? So the student choose a cheese, Swiss cheese, because the Swiss cheese is high in calcium, right? So this is a brill. This is of course scale up brill. This is a standard brill, very, very tiny. Anyway, so this is basically you just drag the shape and they create the model. And then this is a cold block, you using coal, using a coating and to create a 3D model. And this is for the circuits. And then you can do the programming and the simulation and assembling for the for the Arduino. And then we we can uh, we offer all we can offer, uh, currently we mostly in the 3D design and uh, some little bit of code block, but we can offer all of those if you are interested. So that's why I post a survey question is is good for us to know. All right, there's workspace and there's many different feature here. So you just have to um, play and get to know. But one thing I'd really like to point out is sheer design. If you, for instance, you work with your, your family and the, your siblings, and then you can share a design. Everyone can work in the same project. For instance, you design a house, you design a toys, right? And for the school, you're working on the same project. You can share with your, uh, your, your, um, your student fellow and then doing the same design using this sheer design, um, the feature. So this is a very, very interesting, very good uh, feature. All our 3D, uh, the periodic table, uh, most of the students share the design with me. So see, you can move the shape here. Just I, um, If you're in the lab, so we just step by step, but since you guys were not able to do hands-on, I'm just quick go through it. I'm going to show you a video. So this, you can resize it and then you can move it and drag it to shape. There's so many things you can uh, play with it. And then you can, again, you can have a different, um, the work plan and for you, for you using different shape, for easy to put a different shape on. And then there's a ruler as well. And then there's a group button, if you group them, and then you, how you generate the whole. So, so you see this uh, most easy, simplest, uh, um, usually it's a student, it's any, anyone attending the workshop, no experience, the first ever design. Design your name tag. You can have various um, things you can design and then even the whole and the how you want to write it. 
and then how you want your name look like. So I'm just going to, I just uh, create a very, very simple video and just show you guys uh, go through the process. So you go to the Tinkercad and sign in, use your Google, or I'm using my, I created my own account. I'm using my own account, just sign in. And then once you sign in, and then you see the, you see the window here. So see, I want to mention class. If you're a teacher, you can create a class for your, uh, for your class. And the C circus code block 3D design. I'm going to create a new design. So see, I'm just drag my shape. I'm going to create a kitchen, right? And then see, I'm just resize it. If I want to precisely, I use my ruler and I type because kitchen, I say 40 and then for the width, 30. And for the height, five millimeter. Everything is millimeter. And I need my name, right? I just uh, drag my text. See, I want to point out that many, many different things you can choose, it. like a character. We are not only choosing the basic shape. See, I just type my name here, the text, type my name on it. So of course, the different size, but then again, you can resize it. So you can resize it. And then same thing again, you can very precisely and then type the dimension. I don't care about my uh, width and my length, but I do care about my height, right? I want my name show up. So that's why I need to precisely type, see this is what it look like. See, I can zoom in, zoom out. So I only want my name, um, I need to look it up because I don't need a, my letter all the way go down. So just five and then lift up a little bit. And then now I can change the color. And now I'm needing uh, the hole, the keychain, right? I, if you see the shape here, that's basically the hole, all hole here. You can change the color here too. So the hole about a six diameter. So that's the hole. I can just drag it to the corner. And then now I'm using a group. Group the base and that's a hole together. And I generate a hole. See, this is very precisely when you move the, you can move the object, but at the same time you can use the, uh, they add the grid and then move it. But they have a different, um, you can do one millimeter and then 0 0.5, 0.25, and et cetera. So see, you generate the whole. That's basically the process. That's the simplest design ever. But hey, so once you get your uh, design, I'm bringing back to my printer, since we don't have a printer here. So I'm just show you a quick example, just I showed you guys earlier. All that doesn't matter any type of slice. It's always very similar and they have all the feature. And then what you need to do, watch, um, just very, very careful to uh, watch the temperature, match the material, POA. So now I slice it. I got my uh, model in the G code file, ready to go. So even you tell me how many minutes going to print, how much material is going to use it. So that's what it look like for the for the inside, what does it look like? Usually the infill give you 15% uh, this um, automatic default and they give you the different geometry shape. And this is a hexagon. I'm going to, uh, again, very quick, simple, uh, a minute video show you guys go through this. So I'm going to print. I'm going to see everything looks good. The temperature especially. And then I'm looking at my infill, see the hexagon and the line and the triangle. And if it looks good, I'm saying, okay, I'm saving my model in the SD card. And then the slice it. I got my G code ready to go. That's a slice process. And then since we don't have a printer here, so I'm just very quick video show you guys the 3D printer process, 3D printing process. See, I slice it. I got my um, saved in my SD card, right? So I'm ready to go to go to my printer. I take out my SD card 
and I put in my um, my printer. That's no matter what type of printer, very similar. So I turn on my printer and then I choose which file I want to print. So I'm printing my keychain. So see the platform lift up and then start heating up the nozzle, heating up the platform. Yeah, like I said, it doesn't matter what type of printer, very similar. So see heating up a um, platform 50 degree, extrude 200 degree. Now it's ready to print. So that's um, that's a nozzle. See, already very hot. You see the material already extrude out, right? Usually the first is a pre-extrusion. Just get rid of the beginning of the material. Now it's starting to uh, print the keychain. It's about to take about 20 minutes. So this is the final the keychain. So I'm using different models. So that's why it's not the one exactly created. But that's a little curse of Tracy here. So that's basically the whole process, the 3D design and then 3D printing process. So you think, hey, keychain is too simple. Hey, I can do fish spinner. You guys all, some of you maybe played with fish spinner, right? It's a very simple fish spinner, actually so much science. In. So it's very good for the do a science project and then for the class. So the design criteria, you need a low fr friction aerodynamic, right? And then you have to have a high moment inertia. So you need a mass. And then does, does it have to be symmetric? Not really. As long as the center of gravity is in the center, see? That's very new. So there's so much science behind this. See all the Newton's law in that little fidget spinner. If you want to your fidget spinner good. So I'm not going through all this. Just, just get, uh, let you guys know how the 3D printing were able to enhance student learning about science. And then this is a fidget spinner design in the Tinkercad. And then this is our summer, and then we uh, we work with ACS and have the summer camp for a whole week. And then the students stay with us for three hours whole morning. That's a student's work. They design the kitchen, see how creative they are. Various shape, how they want to look like. And then the key, um, the fish spinner too, right? See how the shape. Anyway, so that's, um, even this student have the whole name, just, just a name without a base just really fun activity for them to do. And then there's so much more. You can design house, you can design character, you can design a uh, um, pine, pine wood derby car as well. That little pine wood derby car. And again, so much science behind this. I wish I know earlier when my son was in the Boy Scout, uh, Cub Scout, we did a lot of pine wood derby car. But you, if you look at the car, but why is wheel look like uh, in the in the run have so many holes on it? It's a race car, regular car, and the similar wheel design. Um, there's science behind it. I think I put a link in the in the web, web page as well. That's an engineer engineer from NASA. Um, he did a very good talk. Goes through all the things about what what do we need to consider. Anyway, so when you design the pine uh, the pine wood derby car, you have to think about it, the criteria. Make your car. And, and it will be functional. Well. Anyway, and then for the boat, I think some of us maybe experience when you're doing the elementary school science as a boat, use aluminum foil, design a boat who uh, see who, which boat can hold more penny and without sink, uh, sinking to the water, right? But if you have a 3D uh, design using the Tingle Cat, see uh, the student design all different shape and hold the penny, see who, can hold the most of him, right? And then this work, they even uh, published in the uh, Science Education Journal. And the code block, we have a few minutes. I'm just going to click through the code block and it's very similar. So like I said, if you are interested, we have all different type of workshop for students. And I see the code block, if you open, if you click this, that's bring you here. So this is a code block. And, uh, and bring all the code, code here. This is a simulation page. So if you click the shape, they have all different shape in the text as well. And then you can do modifier. You can create a, a different object and then you can group them. And then just like we did earlier, see the keychain you generate the whole, right? You can move it, you can scale up. And then you have all the, uh, all the basically coding, right? The good thing about the coding, if you have some, something repetitive, 
it's so much easier using the loop and then just generate uh, using the uh, uh, re uh, generate the repetitive um, I, um, object there. So um, this is what it look like. I grab my box, see I click here and then generate a stimulate uh, generate the box. So this is another quick video I'm just going to show you guys. See, get a box. Again, I'm going to make it keychain. I change my um, width, length, height, and then simulate. See, I got the box. But then I need to add the hole, right? So I added the hole on it. But in the center, I need to move. And then as, as, um, if you in school teach your student, they have to really do the math how much they have to move it, right? From the center here. So that's um, have a student think about the problem. How do they want to accomplish this? And then I create a group, generate a whole, and then I add my name on it. My box, that's too big, but you cannot shrink it anymore. You have to scale down. So how much you want to scale down, right? So I scale down half and I got my name. And my name is, everything is immersed with the base I need to lift up, right? So I'm have to use uh, move, and then I don't need to change anything. But I need a Z, change the C, lift up my name on it. So that's you really get a student thinking about it, the computation design, and then using the math to do the calculation. All right, this is um, basically I'm um, quickly go through with the Tinkle Cat. And then usually in our workshop, we'll go through some of the other like Unshape. I really like Unshape as well. So this is a workshop we did for our, our middle school uh, eighth grader, the STEM club girls say they using the work um, Unshape designed as a fidget spinner. They, they did a very different number of prompts. So they had a great time. But those are the students who came to our second time for advanced workshop. All right, interesting to learn more about 3D printing. Make sure to answer your uh, survey questions. And again, we have a 3D printer available for long through our landing library. And then we have a, a maker space available very soon. And then we can have a, a accept your request and the print for you. And then all the information, and then you just check our website and then Facebook as well. Any questions, make sure before you're leaving in the post webinar survey. Any questions, you can always email me. This is my email address. And then I think I finished eight o'clock sharp, but we'll stay um, for another half hour and answer your questions. All right, thank you so much being here. I hope you guys learned something new. And like I said, always drop me uh, email, any questions. We are more than happy to help you. We like to uh, see our students, our uh, whoever, uh, even parents and the teacher, whoever interesting, and um, and they get to go. All right, thank you. I'm taking questions. All right, thank you so much for coming. Let us know any any questions. Have a good evening.